Good morning. I am humbled today. My name is Reverend Dr. William J. Barber, the President and Senior Lecturer of Repairers of the Breach, and Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris is joining here, who is a co-director of Kairos. I am humbled to have been invited by Alabama clergy, evangelicals, people who may not use that term per se, but indeed who represent orthodox evangelicalism, a deep concern for the poor, the least of these, the broken, those on the margins. And there comes a time that we have to speak with prophetic authority and with a prophetic voice. And right now, we're in one of those times. Yes. I want to ask first to start with prayer, to ask uh, Reverend Jennifer if she would come Jennifer Selders, and she will also come back with a letter that scores of clergy have signed regarding the issue of Roy Moore, regarding his continual attempt to wrap himself in, in Christian ideology, but in a way that is not Christian, but a, what, we, what some of us call a, 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 a extreme Republican form of religionism. Uh, that is so contrary uh, to the real values of Christian evangelicalism That's right. and Christian right. theology. Let's make it plain now. And we have to be clear about that. So I want her to come with prayer, and then I'm going to make a statement. And then there will be six other speakers all, uh, who will come, and then at the end we will do this letter, and we will invite others around the nation, around Alabama, to sign it. Uh, and to begin and to encourage people to stand strong and to engage and to get out the vote. Yes. Hello, my name is Jennifer Sanders and I am the pastor of Beloved Community Church, a blessedly diverse United Church of Christ congregation and community in Avondale. I want to welcome all to this place at this moment to a time of sharing concerns about the abuse of power and of imagining prophetic possibilities. Yes. Let us take a moment to center ourselves and open our hearts. I'm a follower of Jesus, so my encounter with God is a Christian one. However, people understand the sacred in different ways. So I ask you to pray with me in the heart of your own knowledge of that which is holy. Let us pray. Creator and creation. Today we live in the seriousness of our time and we take seriously our responsibilities within it. We pause in this moment to nourish our spirits in connection to the holiness that surrounds us in all places and at all times. We ask to be continually transformed in and by and through that holiness. We lift up our hope for a world free of any form of exploitation, mm -hmm. a world of respect for the lives of all people yes. and for the planet itself. Yes, Lord. We lift up all who are suffering in a suffering world. May we side with those who suffer, whether they are far away or very near. May our work diminish their suffering and bring justice and mercy and compassion into their lives. Give us a passion for truth in all circumstances. Give us humility where it is needed, confidence where it is needed, discernment to know what is right and the courage to do it. Yes. Thank you. Give us hearts of gratitude and generosity. Yes. Give us the discipline to summon up what is best in ourselves yes. for the sake of our neighbor. Yes. Let us be a friend to all who are marginalized. Help us speak truth to power with love in our words and in our deeds. Yes. May we be genuine in our hearts and in our work. Yes. We pray for joy and good humor and kindness and hope, and we rest in love and its promise. And we pray in the name of all that is holy. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. It is a requirement of Christian love to speak truth yeah, that's right. and to stand for justice because as Dr. King once said, love without justice is weak and anemic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but justice without love can be harsh and hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We come this morning to speak truth with love to Alabama, to this nation. I want for a moment to talk about the unbearable hypocrisy of Roy Moore's Christian rhetoric. All right. A disturbing pattern has emerged since the Washington Post first reported that four women accused Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore of offenses ranging from creepy to criminal. People in Gadsden, Alabama, where Moore worked in the district attorney's office three decades ago, have said that it was common knowledge that Moore pursued teenagers when he was in his 30s. Locals told the New Yorker that they recall being told that the, the local mall banned Moore for the same reason. Accusations of criminal assault are difficult to prove in court, and the statute of limitations in these cases has since passed. But Republicans outside of Alabama have started to back away from Moore following the allegations they have chosen to believe the accusers. Moore's base, on the other hand, continues to support him despite the evidence. For many of them, this is a matter of faith. In fact, just yesterday, some said, stay out of his personal life and focus on the issues. But these are the same ones that have supported more when he has done nothing but invaded people's personal lives. Jerome Cox, the pastor of Greenwood Baptist Church in Prattville, Alabama, told NBC News he would be supporting more because he's done a lot of good for the state of Alabama. Everything else is for the Lord to sort out. This is not Christianity. Rather, it is an extreme Republican religionism that stands by party and regressive policy no matter what. It is not the gospel of Christ. It is the gospel of greed. It is a religion, but it is the religion of racism and lies and not the religion of redemption and love. It is unlikely that any of Moore's accuser can definitely prove that he sexually assaulted them 30 years ago, a point the defiant former judge knows well. But even, and this is critical, particularly for the media to hear, and where we have to stand as Christian ministers, even before these allegations made national headlines, it was clear that Moore's policy agenda endangered the children of Alabama and this nation. That's right. And in many ways, he was not living up to Christian values before these allegations. Mm -hmm. This man, who wants to be Alabama's next senator, be among one of the 100 most powerful men and women in the world, mm -hmm. be among a body that can spread laws all across the United States, this man wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act that some for racialized reasons call Obamacare. Mm -hmm. They want to make it making health care inaccessible for millions in Alabama and elsewhere. That's right. There are people in Alabama who, who have died because Alabama has refused to expand Medicaid. How, Harvard University says for every 2,800 people, excuse me, every 500,000 people denied Medicaid expansion, somewhere between 2,000 to 2,800 died. Wow. He has said before the allegation that Islam is a false religion yeah. and said that no person of the Muslim faith should serve in our United States Congress. Mm -hmm. He has said before these allegations that homosexual conduct should be illegal. He wants to curtail equal protection under the law 
for all people, which is the 14th Amendment. This man supported keeping, keeping segregation laws on the books in Alabama before these allegations. This man has fought against living wages before these allegations even though there are over a million people in Alabama who are poor and one in every four children in Alabama are poor, thousands. And he has not pre presented any policy to help the poor. If anything, he has supported policies and even tax policies that would hurt the poor and give to the greedy. In short, Moore's political agenda presents a credible threat to millions of vulnerable people in America and children, yet Moore claims to be the moral and Christian candidate, using religion as the U.S. slave masters did before him to justify actions which fly in the face of Christ's teaching. Like segregationists, Moore imagines the struggle for equality in America as a story of loss. Mm -hmm. Think about this now. At a revival meeting earlier this week, Moore complained that he was being persecuted <laughs> like Christ and the prophets. <laughs> now the prophets, and, not, and it's not even funny. If we think about it, it's sad. Because the prophets were persecuted for standing up for the poor and standing against injustice and for welcoming the strangers. Moore also lamented the fact that the courts took prayer out of schools in 1962 as though that was some traumatic event in this culture and failed to mention that when prayer was in the school, so was segregation. That's right. That's right. And then he made a cryptic and confusing, but not confusing to us that know the code words, to new rights. He said, prayer was taken out of the school in 62, I paraphrase. And then he said, people began to get all these rights in 1965. Wow. Now, 1965 was the year that Selma and Alabama were in the forefront of the world's politics. That's right. It was the year the Voting Rights Acts were signed. Mm -hmm. The year that people began to get all these rights was the year of America's new birth. Yeah. Right, like you're playing now. And more, Roy Moore sees that as a loss and not a gain yeah. and wants to take that to the Senate that will have to vote on voting rights laws as one who survived abuse by a stranger. In my own childhood, I feel deep sympathy, empathy for the women who have come forward to name and confront their abuser. At the same time, my soul grieves as a Christian minister for people who are fed such distorted views of Christianity and racism and they are willing to support more no matter what. Shame, shame, shame. I've heard the confession of abusers. I know that people who are broken and hurting in their own souls can hurt people and rally others to join them out of deep pain. But I'm deeply troubled by Moore's determination to wrap his own painful policies and pain-causing ways in the theological claim of being like Christ. There is nothing Christian about the policies Moore has supported. They are as immoral as the terrible abuse he so vehemently denies. While he wants to compare his plight to the suffering of Jesus, there is no biblical basis. And that is critical media when people say to you that they are evangelicals and they are promoting a biblical point of view, ask them where the scriptures are that support taking health care. Ask them where the scriptures are that support them supporting segregation. Ask them where the scriptures are that give them the authority not to love everybody. Ask them where the scriptures are 
that say that you should support tax cuts for the wealthy while you abandon the poor. There is no biblical basis. As well as he knows his Bible or claims to, Roy Moore never quotes from the more than 2,000 verses that exhort us to care for the poor, the sick, and the stranger. And he does not even live up to the Ten Commandments that he claims to love so much. He has apparently overlooked the prophet Isaiah, who said this in Isaiah 10, woe unto you who legislate evil and rob the poor of their rights and make children and women their prey. Evidently, he has overlooked what Jesus said in his first sermon, Luke chapter four, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind, healing to the brokenhearted and liberty to them that are bruised. Now, national Republican leaders finally who claim the moral high ground, many who want a merit badge for re re renouncing more now, they are like those who spoke out against white supremacy after Charlottesville. They condemned the hate in Charlottesville, but they never repented of white nationalist policies. And so many people who are now speaking against more in this latest um, accusations, their moral outrage rings hollow because it renounces more based on his personal patterns but says nothing about his disturbing pattern of public policy. Mm -hmm. What is happening right now in Alabama matters for the soul of the nation. Yes. Yes. Just like the march across the Edmunds Pettus Bridge matter. Mm -hmm. Some want us people to stay out of Alabama, but good people in Alabama have invited people to come. That's right. And let me just say for the record, Bannon isn't staying out of Alabama. <laughs> Money from all over the country isn't staying in Alabama. And just like Freedom Summer years ago, we're coming into Alabama. We're joining brothers and sisters in Alabama. And our word to everybody is anyone who has any influence must help blacks, progressive whites, Latinos, gays, straight, Christians, Muslims, Jews, and all who want to move our country forward, get out and vote like you have never voted before. This is no time to retreat or to remain idle. Yep. We must stand up for truth in the public square. We must reclaim our political and, and faith traditions which have been hijacked. Yes. And if they marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge 52 years ago, black, white, Jew, and Christian, surely we can march to the ballot box in 2017. Yes. Let me invite now my dear brother Scott Douglas, the Executive Director of Greater Birmingham Ministries. Following him, the Reverend Dr. Lawton Higgs, Senior United Methodist Church, retired, if they would come in that order. Vote or die! That's right, vote or die! Vote or die! Vote or die! My name is Scott Douglas. I'm Executive Director of Greater Birmingham Ministries here, and we welcome Dr. Barbara here. And like Dr. King was 50 years ago, he's here because injustice is here. Mm -hmm. We got a candidate running on the ballot of injustice. He wants to go and drain the swamp. Well, you don't send an alligator to the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> Predators like alligators is where they want to be. Before I leave, let me say this. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, mm. thy neighbor's ass, thy neighbor's teenage daughter. <laughs> we ask that one more, stop hijacking the Ten Commandments that he neither reads, understands, nor follows. That's right. And finally, we ask the, all the good faithful people of Alabama to know this work is going to be difficult because it's easier to roll hate and fear downhill than push love and hope uphill. But push we must, and march we must, and vote we must. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. My name is the Reverend Dr. Lawton Higgs, Sr., and uh, I'm a retired United Methodist pastor, and I'm a recovering racist. All right, tell the truth. 
and because of my love for our democratic values and my deep love for our faith values, I am a scallywag. All right. I'm an indigenous white southern male. I am Christian. I love black people. Hello, Dr. Forbes. Welcome to Birmingham. <laughs> you slipped in here on us. Good to see you. I love poor white people. I love rich white people. I love immigrants from Mexico and all over the world. I love Jews and I love Muslims. My dear friend Ashfaq Tofik is over here. We prayed together. We've worked for peace together. We've struggled for justice together. Thank you for being Amen. with us today. Stand up. Let folks see you. We appreciate you. I love Sikhs, Buddhists, and Hindus, Unitarians. I love gay and lesbian and transgender people. I love atheists. And I'm committed to working with all of them for the full civil and human rights of all people in Alabama, in America, and in the world. In Alabama, because of the current Republican policy of the extremist Republican Party in Alabama that Roy Moore is running on for the U.S. Senate, policies that I call economic Jim Crow, 20% of all the people in Alabama live in poverty. Mm -hmm. A total of a million people, and the majority of whom are white. That's right, that's right. And because of these policies of no living wage, lack of access to health care, underfunded public education, no funded for public transportation, the gerrymandering of the electorate, electorate, difficulties in accessing voting, a lack of affordable houses, taxes on groceries, and out of control payday lending, the city of Birmingham is the second poorest city in America. And so, Dr. Barber, mm -hmm. thank you for responding to our invitation All right. yes, to come to Alabama. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're committed to working with you in this Poor People's Campaign Amen. to eliminate this economic Jim Crow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, there's already too much economic Jim Crow in Washington, but we don't want to export anymore. Right. We do not want to export that by electing a candidate whose fundamental principles are committed to it. Hmm. Hmm. In 1984, just eight or ten blocks up here on 8th Avenue West, around the corner at the intersection of Arkadelphia Road, God called me to invite a black family to full membership and leadership in our historic white church. And for the last 33 years, I have been faithful to that call. I have worked to build multicultural and racial congregations and to build multicultural democracy here in Alabama. Amen. But the white male supremacy, the economic Jim Crow, the fundamentalist religion of the current Republican agenda, the policy that Roy Moore continues to promote in his campaign for U.S. Senate have blocked my work and the work of all these folks standing here on this platform. And they've spent millions of dollars to keep the status quo in place. And we've got to change that. Yes. Work together to change that. Mm -hmm. And we can begin by not electing Roy Moore to the Senate yes. of the United States of America. Right. Now it breaks my heart, and we need to weep today 
you know, if, I wish the media could have been back here and heard the report of why we need a poor people's campaign. Come on. People are hurting, yes. suffering, yes. dying, yes. constantly. Yes. That these non-Christian policies of white male supremacy, economic Jim Crow, and religious hatred are supported by the white church in Alabama. That's right. Mm. That's right. It is. Eighty percent of voting white people and white churches in Alabama supported Donald Trump. And the white church in Alabama is Roy Moore's political support base. White Christians in Alabama have a very serious religious problem. We operate out of the Christian identity theory of white male privilege, the interpretation of the curse of Ham in the Bible as the justification of a subhuman inferiority and perpetual role of blacks as slaves for white people, and the interpretation of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah as, quote, the old white man in the sky, that God's hatred of homosexuals, and of this God's commitment to eliminate all gay and lesbian people, and that we, as this false God's people, should carry out that commandment of God to destroy them. Even though the prophet Ezekiel says it was for a different reason that the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah occurred, Prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel 1649 says pride, mm. greed, greed, and the lack of concern for the poor and needy was what caused their destruction. Roy Moore is a dedicated servant of and is seriously infected with this false religious virus, this false Christian religious virus, as are most white males in Alabama. Including even some of our white Christian bishops. And this is true because this heretical Christianity is the revenge religion that was created in Alabama and the South out of the Christian religion that supported the evil. <laughs> I, I know you did. That, no, they said, that's what they said. Huh? That's what they said, but go ahead. <laughs> that's right. We're going to bring it back. All right, well, let, let's bring it back because until white pastors and judicatory leaders mm -hmm. repent mm -hmm. All right. and begin leading our church to the place of justice and love and peace, mm -hmm. it'll never be. Now, I, I want y'all to imagine before I sit down, I want you all to imagine with me what Alabama would look like today if the white powers of Alabama would have repented after the evils of slavery. Still ain't repented. That's right. They still had, yeah, they still had. That's what we're fighting again. But imagine what Alabama would be like if they would have repented of the religious and political systems that supported slavery and after the defeat of the Civil War would have humbled themselves and joined hand with former slaves and built the great society. Alabama would be the shining light of America. Amen. And the shining light of all the world. Yes, sir. I got a lot more to say. Yes, sir. Well, let's listen to these other great folks from Alabama. Hey, let's listen to them. And uh, right. let's do this work. Yes, 
The trouble is our voters are infected with this evil. We got to heal the evil and then the vote will flow naturally for justice and human dignity. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Higgs. Let me ask the Reverend Kelly Hudlow of Christ Episcopal Church and we're coming on our own regard as clergy. I want people to know that. We're all coming as, in our own regard as ministers. Uh, now, Reverend Dolly Howell Pankney will come at this time. And then um, next will be the Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris. If they, these three sisters would all come and stand at this time. My name is Kelly Hudlow. I was born and raised in Mobile, Alabama. I have lived and worked in this state my entire life. I have been to Selma, I have been to Montgomery, I've been to Birmingham, I've been to Tuscaloosa. I have been to all the places where the very stones of the buildings and streets cry out, reminding us of the holy men and women that worked to bring God's justice and freedom to Alabama so many years ago. And these men and women continued in a long line of prophets and martyrs who answers God's call to transform our world right now into God's kingdom. I have a great honor of serving as a chaplain at Christ Episcopal Church in Fairfield. It's a city not far from here and one that has certainly seen better times. A lot of our folks struggle with money, with health care, with education, we are a community of people that are perhaps the most vulnerable to the policies that limit access to health care, access to the ballot, and deny a living wage. But every Sunday, we come together as a community of faith in hope and love and joy and lift each other up. And we pray for ourselves and for our children that we'll be safe one more day from the violence of this world. Mm -hmm. And we take seriously Jesus' parable judging the nations. And we know the answer to the question of, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or naked or a stranger or sick or in prison? Truly, we know that the answer is just as we have done this to the least of these. You did it to Christ. And we don't have much, but what we do have, we share. And we share every chance we can. It's because of my faith and my love of my community that I am here today because I can no longer stand quietly by as Holy Scripture is cherry-picked and perverted to support policies uh. that harm the most vulnerable in our communities. Right, I can no longer stand quietly by as our holy texts are picked holy. apart to be used as weapons of cruelty and division. As a person of faith and as a minister of the gospel, it is my call to tell the whole story of our Creator who calls us into greater unity with each other and with God, a God that has sought us throughout history to a life of loving, life-giving, liberating relationship with each other and with our God, the God that loved us enough to become one of us. Yeah. It's time for the people of consciousness and faith in this great state to stop letting others twist who we are and to divide us. We love each other here. We take care of each other here. I have seen it time and time again after tornadoes and hurricanes and fires and death. We come together to lift each other up. And now it's time to speak up. Speak up. That's it. Plenty of people call me foolish. Foolish for staying in Alabama. Foolish for being a Christian. Foolish for thinking that people can change a system of corrupt power. Uh -huh. And maybe I am. <laughs> but I take comfort in the words of Paul, a man that certainly learned about the transformational power of God when he was changed from being right by the law to being righteous in God's grace. Right. Paul reminds us, that God has chosen the foolish yeah. in the world to shame the wise. He has chosen the weak to shame the strong. So it is time for us holy fools to remind our leaders that our nations will be judged by what we did or not do for the least.
lost in our communities. And it is left to us holy fools to remind us again that we know what the Lord requires of us. We know what the Lord requires of us is in this place right now, and that is to do justice now, to love kindness now, and to walk humbly with our God now and in this place. Thank you. I'm Reverend Dolly Howell Pankey, pastor of St. James CME Church in Cordova, Alabama, and coordinator of social concerns for the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church Birmingham region. All right. like but I stand here today because this is personal for me. All right. All right. You see, as an African-American woman who was born in the Deep South in the late 60s, early 60s, let me get my age right here, I have a lifelong relationship with the evil practices of racism, sexism, and other exclusionary practices. These practices from my earliest years denied the imago dei, the image of God in me as both a person of color and as a woman. As a person of color, I learned early that there were places where I and my family were not welcome, that we should hold our heads down and not live in our full dignity. And I learned this from people who repeatedly indicated that we were out of place. By and large, those lessons were taught to us by people who identified themselves as Christians, wow. by people who attended worship regularly, who taught Sunday school, and who had various spiritual disciplines that they practiced. Yet they felt such hatred for a group of people that they, com they comfort comforted themselves by denying the image of God in me and in people who looked like me. I say today, that Christianity had been hijacked by their exclusionary practices. And as I matured and acknowledged a call to ministry leadership, I became acquainted once again with exclusionary practices. When Christians made in the image of God denied God's presence in me, God's spirit upon me, and God's gifts through me. I had never learned that from my mother and father who wholeheartedly affirmed and supported those gifts and graces at work in me. But it was my fellow Christians, clergy colleagues, ministry supervisors, and lay members who taught me once again that I was not welcome in many places, that I was not wanted at the table. It was fellow Christians who said that God did not call me and who told me that I was out of place. I say that Christianity had been hijacked by their exclusionary practices. You see today, we stand in a time when, once again, Christianity has been hijacked by exclusionary practices. Yes, For I have come to know that when God looked at God's creation and said, it is very good, those words included me. Yes. I have come to know God as the Holy One who is larger, hallelujah, who is more expansive, more compassionate, more loving, more merciful, more gracious, more inclusive than anything that I can think or imagine. This is the God who included me. And as one who knows the power of inclusion, I seek to live my life and express my Christian values in ways that say that there is plenty good room for all of us in God's world. And so I invite you, I challenge you to not let Christianity continue to be hijacked right. by the exclusionary dogma and practices that seek to shrink the expansiveness of our God, okay. that seek to deny the image of God in any person in God's creation, that foment distrust and fear and hatred. I invite you to not let Christianity be hijacked as a pawn in this election cycle to diminish, diminish any person of any ethnicity, any creed, any socioeconomic status, any gender identity, any sexual orientation, or anything else that we place, yes. hallelujah, as holy. Let us not let those things diminish any person, for we are all created in the image and the likeness of God. Mm. I plan to go to the polls on December 12th here in the city of Birmingham the county of Jefferson, the state of Alabama, the place that was once the city of Bull Connor. And I plan to cast my vote according to my Christian values. And those values see the image of God in all. 
I refuse to let Christianity continue to be hijacked. And I encourage you to do the same. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. My name is Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris. I am the co-director of the Cairo Center for Religions, Rights, and Social Justice at Union Theological Seminary, and I'm very proud to be co-chairs with the Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II of the Poor People's Campaign, Amen. a national call for moral revival. Amen. All right. It is an honor to be here in Alabama with these leaders today, because currently, in our nation, right now, 43% of children are living in poverty, yes. struggling to have adequate food and shelter, health care, yes. and education. Mm -hmm. Roy Moore and other so-called Christian evangelicals have been complicit in this abuse of children and young people, standing for programs that deny people health care, that keep wages low, that discriminate against immigrants, African Americans, and other people of color and poor people. We should have known his disregard for women, for children, by his positions on health care on poverty, yes, make it on poverty among children, mm -hmm. on living wages, on rampant racism. So we are here today to challenge the hypocrisy of so-called evangelical leaders who profess loyalty to Jesus Christ, but do not follow his instructions or commandments. As we already heard in the last judgment in Matthew 25, we are told that we are judged by how we treat the poor, the stranger, the widow, mm -hmm. the hungry, yes. the captive. Mm -hmm. Because how we treat the least of these is how we treat God. That's right. Well, if this is the case with Roy Moore, God is being pretty mistreated. We must question the faith leaders who have stood up to defend rampant sexism, rampant racism, rampant homophobia, and the abuse of children, and ask what Bible are people following? That's right. What commandments, what Ten Commandments are you adhering to? In the Old Testament, the suffering of the poor is the most prominent theme. In the New Testament, one out of every 15 verses is about the poor and the marginalized. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the whole Bible, starting with the Genesis, ending in Revelation, uh -huh. has an arc of justice, yes. an arc of caring for the yes. least of these, yes. a system of anti-poverty, pro-justice yes. policies running through it. Yes. This starts with the Exodus and the manna, which is most likely a response to Joseph and Pharaoh setting up a system where a few religious and political leaders amass great wealth at the expense of the people. Sound a little bit familiar? But instead, with God, God's plan is for society to be organized around meeting the needs of everyone. It runs through Deuteronomy and the legal codes, of how society and how our political and our religious leaders are supposed to release slaves. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to forgive debts, pay people what they deserve, distribute funds to the needy. It continues with the prophets, 
who decry those with religious and with political power for oppressing the poor and then cloaking this oppression in religious terms, in a heretical theology, and insist that the way to love and honor God is to promote, promote programs that actually uplift the poor, that welcome the stranger. Finally, in that Bible, through the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, a Savior we follow who traveled across the land preaching liberation, setting up free healthcare clinics, compelling society to live out the Jubilee Codes and promote the Sabbath prescriptions. Even our Apostle Paul, in his four letters, sets up a collection for the poor and say, says that the role of society isn't to impoverish the poor with taxes mm -hmm. while the rich get tax breaks, mm -hmm. and that the community prosperity rests on a radical redistribution of wealth from the top yes. to the bottom, yes. not the other way. Yes. So our Bible teaches us what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. so, but the so-called Christians backing Roy Moore are silent on the issues that the Bible is so loud about. Yes. So we are here with clergy, impacted people, and yes. folks from across this state yes. saying, we need to do better. Yes. We need a poor people's campaign. We need a national call for a moral revival. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And much of that campaign has to begin right here with this election. That's our focus and the immediacy. I know some of the media says, well, we've never heard this much Bible and Bible study at a press conference. <laughs> and the reason we're doing that is because you have so many people continuing to throw out policies. That's right. They have no scriptural background. They don't talk about the majority of things that are, that are dealt with from a real reading of scripture, and yet they claim to be Christian. Mm -hmm. Lord help us. And they, teach, and, and, and they teach basically that if you read, if you want to put up the Ten Commandments and you hate gay people and you dislike Muslims and you support tax cuts to the wealthy and you believe in guns, then you're Christian. Well, we're here to say, no, that's not a Christian perspective. And we're here to say it from the South. Because right. far too often the media tends to suggest that all of the people of faith in the South, there are thousands upon thousands of people and Christian pastors who know better. How in the world do you think the civil rights movement began in the South? It was black and white Christians, abolitionists, who stood up together. And so we need to stop using this term white evangelicalism. That's not even in the Bible. There's no such thing as white evangelicalism. There's no such thing as a liberal Christian or a conservative Christian. But there is a whole lot about prophetic justice and love and mercy. It's about the moral center. And we need to change the conversation. Yes. Sometimes the media doesn't even answer. A lot of the people here, if you ask them are they evangelical, they'll say no because the way the, move, the word has been so hijacked. Yes. But true evangelicalism is not about what you say. It's about what you do. Yes. And how you challenge the systems of this world. The systems of this world. When Jesus first talked about the poor, his first sermon, good news to the poor, the word is patokos, Greek. It means those who have been made poor by economic exploitation. So if you claim to be an evangelical and you're not standing up against systems of poverty and systems that deny people health care, then you are not an evangelical in the, in the most clearest and profound sense of the word. All right. That's right. Now, we have three things to do, and then we will have these people. You can talk to them. We have questions. There's a letter. You've seen a lot of people signing letters, and they act as though they represent all of the people of faith Come on. Mm. in Alabama. Well, there's another letter that's been signed by scores of people. Mm -hmm. My dear sister will come, and she will present some passages of that letter, and then tell everybody how to sign it. But, and then I want to have 
Bob Zellner, who was the first Alabamian white man to work for SNCC. Right. And then the Reverend Dr. Right. Jim Forbes, who, who's from the South, to come and issue a call for us to get out the poll. Now, in reality, the best thing that Roy Moore could do and the loving thing we could recommend as pastors, he has to be mighty broken on the inside. Yes, he does. And my, he must be hurting on the inside, a torn man. To on the one hand, try to wrap himself in religious garb, and then on the other hand, to do so many irreligious policy things, and then with all these accusations. And the best thing he could do would be to step back and do something called metanoia in Greek. Yes. Repent, yes. ask for forgiveness, yes. assess what he's doing, and step back from this. But instead, he's doubling down. Yeah. Hmm. And as we said way before the accusations about the children, his policies were out of line with Christian values. Mm -hmm. And even the values of our Constitution, his policies were out of line with the 14th Amendment. His policies were out of line with justice for all. But if he doesn't do that, then Alabamians and everybody that knows anybody in Alabama, and you can touch them, we need to have a mighty major march on the polls. Amen. People need to exercise their rights. Somebody used to say, if you ever needed to vote, you sure do need to vote right now. Don't let this be a low turnout election, Alabama. This is the time. I hear my sister saying, vote or die, because people died for us to have the right to vote. So would you come, my dear sister, and Bob, and, if, and Dr. Ford, you make your way and stand right here, and then we'll conclude this press conference, and we'll take questions from the media. Tell them who you are. I am Reverend Angie Wright. I am an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ, and I serve on the staff of Greater Birmingham Ministries. Have you ever noticed that it is always the extremists who speak the loudest and get the most attention? Roy Moore is a Christian extremist. An extremist of any religion can be very dangerous. Yes. He is an extremist Christian whose hateful rhetoric, harmful policies, and abuses of power are perversions of Christianity. Yes, make it plain now. Now to watch the news, if you lived outside the state, you might think that the extremist voice of Roy Moore represents the only voice of Christianity in Alabama. Oh. But we know better, don't we? Yes, we do. You might think that all Alabamians want to use the force of government to impose their extreme religious views while denying protection for anyone who falls outside their rigid definitions of right or wrong. But we know better. Don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You might think that all Alabamians want to enshrine Christian supremacy while denying basic civil and human rights to people of color, people of other faiths, and people in the LGBTQ community. But we know better, don't we? Yes, we do. You might think that all Alabamians are blind and deaf to the need for health care for our poor and working neighbors. But we do know better, don't we? Yes, we do. Christianity is about love and justice and mercy. Mm -hmm. And Roy Marr embodies none of these qualities. And that's why we have organized Christian pastors in Alabama to speak up and to speak out. We have written an open letter opposing Roy Moore because we believe his misguided candidacy demands a principled public witness by Christian pastors in Alabama. Yes, it does. And Nearly a hundred pastors have signed the letter in less than two days. Mm. And the number right. continues to grow. We have written this letter because we feel compelled by individual conscience to denounce the threats that are posed by Moore's extremist views, hateful rhetoric, and abuses of power. The letter can be signed here today. They're on, this, on the altar. You can come and sign your name if you are clergy in Alabama. You are also invited to sign your name if you are not clergy from Alabama. There is a companion letter 
that folks who are not Alabama clergy can sign. You can also sign online. And I'm quite sure if you Google pastor's letter, Alabama clergy, you'll find it. And we will be happy to send it out. It is an extraordinary and almost unprecedented thing for pastors to take a public stand right. against yes. a candidate for public office. Mm -hmm. But these are extraordinary times. Yes, they are. And they call on all of us, yes. not just clergy, all yes. of us, to take extraordinary measures. Yes, it does. So let's do whatever it takes to make sure that our voices are not silent, to make sure that our voices are not drowned out, to make sure that the voice of the essence of Christianity, love, justice, and mercy, will be heard. And let's turn this country around. Amen. Amen. I wanted to join before this they come an online sign and ask others to come. And what we're going to do at the end of this press conference, we're going to have this letter and media, you will see people coming up who will sign. Please get the message out. She said hundreds have already signed this letter. And I think, that, my dear sister, it's going to have to become a not extraordinary thing. Yes. We have to return to the public square. Mm -hmm. right. Like Jesus, like the prophets. That's right. We can no longer allow That's hate to have the stage by itself. That's right, man. Amen. Amen. And so I want to sign, and I know, I'm sure Reverend Dr. Forbes, who's coming in, he's also with the, would you want Dr. Forbes to... Then I'm going to ask him and Bob Zellner to close us out in their own way as elders in the movement Amen. who fought in the movement and call all of us to the ballot box December 12th. Reverend, I'm signing this because somebody signed my name to the Book of Life. To the Book of Life. And I want to sign my name for life. For life. Right. And for justice. Yes, sir. And for peace. Yes, sir. And for truth. Yes, sir. So that's, I want you to know why, why I'm, I'm signing. signing. I want everybody else to know why, know why I'm, I'm signing. signing. That's right. Thank you. Um, brothers and sisters, I'm here reporting to the call. I'm here for in Polish training. If you're going to do a poor people's campaign, a moral revival for justice, but for the poor. So that's why I'm here, Don. Mm -hmm. It turns out that I'm in the midst of a political situation, mm -hmm. but you know why I'm here. That's right. Both. But let me tell you why I'm here. I am a part of a special movement that's trying to do something about the nightmare our nation is going through. Yes. And I have a humble assignment. I haven't told you about it yet. Humble assignment to go around and see if I can help recruit people for God's dream team. Yeah. Mm. Mm. In times like this, you need a you know, dream team. And so anybody, that's what I'm about. But let me say what I say to people who are going to be a part of the dream team. So first of all, can you imagine whatever your state is or whatever the issue is, that it's election day. So you get up in the morning and this is the prayer you pray. Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me as I move throughout this day. May your promptings deep inside me show me what to do and say. In the power of your presence, strength and courage will increase. In the wisdom of your guidance is the path that leads to peace. And then, as you get ready to leave your house, and you're getting ready to go to the polls, whatever you're voting, you say, in the way that I walk, in the way that I talk, mm -hmm. in the way that I think, and in the way that I pray, in everything I do, yeah. I want to honor you by the way I live each day. But I got to amend it now. Since I'm here. I got to say, in the way that I walk, in the way that I talk, in the way that I think, and in the way that I pray, and now you got to make me add, and in the way that I vote. vote. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. In everything I do, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. And sometimes it's hard to figure it out because I'm hearing voices on this side, voices on that. And sometimes self-interest is in, and sometimes party interest, and sometimes yeah. regional interest, and sometimes gender interest, and sometimes orientation interest, all of these things. But, but Lord, as a member of your dream team, I really mean it. 
when I get ready to sign my name or push your lever or, or vote, I want you to know that what I'm saying is that in the way that I walk, in the way that I talk, mm -hmm. in the way that I think, in the way that I pray, and even especially in these troubled times, in the way that I vote, vote. Yes. Come on. in everything I do, mm -hmm. I want to honor you yes. by the way I act yes. and behave yes. and think and pray and vote yes. every day. Amen. 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 Uh, I am uh, Bob Zellner. I'm from L.A., Lower Alabama. <laughs> and uh, there's a change happening in Alabama. I was just with John Lewis and, uh, and uh, Senate candidate jo Doug Jones down in Mobile and all over Baldwin County. And you very seldom see uh, signs for the other person because people are embarrassed about that. But everybody's putting up signs for uh, the new revival in uh, Alabama. Um, my daddy was a Ku Klux Klansman here in Birmingham. <laughs> Granddaddy was in the Ku Klux Klan here in Birmingham. I'm traveling all over the state of Alabama to see old friends and talk about a change in Alabama. Right. And, and they're saying, for some reason, Bob, you and John Lewis, you were right 50 years ago. And they said, uh, we see that you were right now. But there's some people haven't done that yet. Uh, Moore, Roy Moore is one of those people who said, uh, I was uh, right then and I'm right now. So we've got to make a tremendous movement in this state and the main thing we need to do is get the young people out. The young people don't know Bob Zellner. They don't know John Lewis, but they know what's right and wrong and they need to know that we've got to get all the church people together in this state and join Reverend Barber and the Poor People's Campaign. I worked with Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. I worked on the original Poor People's Campaign. And this is stirring the nation now. And this is the focal point in Alabama. That's why all the media is here. That's why all the focus is here. Because the uh, issues are coming to a head. And it looks like we're going in a right-wing direction, but we're on the brink of a positive, progressive era in this country. And I learned one thing from Martin Luther King and Mrs. Rosa Parks and Ella Baker, and that is that sisterhood and brotherhood is not so wild a dream as those who profit by postponing it pretend. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So everybody say, everybody. Go to, Go to the polls and vote. And vote. We, refuse we refuse to see, to see Christian, values Christian values of love, of love and, justice and justice and mercy, and mercy hijacked, hijacked and, replaced and replaced with lies, with lies and, meanness and meanness and hate. And hate. The, change the change is in us. Is in us. The, change the change is in Alabama. In Alabama. Around the, nation. around the nation, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. There, are there are some lovers and some justice seekers, justice seekers. in Alabama. Alabama. We're organizing. We're, organizing. We're, turning out. We're turning out. We're turning up. We're, We're speaking up. We're speaking up. We, intend to vote. we intend to vote. We will not, we will not go backwards, go backwards. Forward. forward, together, together. not one step. Not Back. Back. Somebody died. Somebody died. That we might vote. That we might vote. Now we will vote. Now we will vote. Or die. Or die. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. To turn it out. To turn it out. Turn it up. Turn it Everybody. Everybody. That wants America. Wants America. To go forward. Go forward. 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 Begins. Yeah. Right here. Right here. Right now. Right now. In Alabama. In Alabama. Right. We have we have this letter. Where's the full print of the letter? And I want to turn this podium around. Members of the media, do you have any quick questions? Please 
This is a copy of the letter media. If you do not have it, there are copies of it. Please put it on your media websites and let the nation know. Everybody who's not signed this letter that wants to, would you come and line up here so the media can see persons signed up, starting with the clergy members who are not here. Would you come? Come out to the, the mass meeting on tomorrow at 5 o'clock right here at this church. Yes, sir. Is Roy Moore wrong for staying in this race? I believe Roy Moore is wrong for, for standing on this race, but it's, it, but it's regardless. See, that's a point that we have to say more, Roy Moore was wrong, particularly since he claims always to be Christian, in standing for policies to turn back health care. That's not a Christian position. He's wrong for turn, standing for policies that would give tax cuts to the wealthy and hurt the poor and cut programs for the poor. That's not a Christian policy. And, and that's true for others. And it's, it's even wrong for those that now want to say he was wrong because of what happened to the little girls, not women. They weren't women when it happened. But part of the reason I believe he's so arrogant in his position now is because he was so supported on wrong positions before. That's right. See, the, the support of religious extremism over the years have emboldened him to think he can get away with anything. And so the reality is he's been wrong a long time. He was wrong because even this state put him off the judicial bench twice. He was wrong. He's been wrong. But he's been empowered by folk like Steve Bannon and white nationalists and white supremacists. And really, what's so sad about it is that a lot of the people that are being hoaxed into voting for him under this so-called Christian rapping will be hurt by the policies. The majority of the people that are poor in Alabama are white. The majority of the families that need health care are white. The majority of the families that will be helped by this tax plan they're trying to, will be hurt by this tax plan they're trying to pass are white. If you undermine the 14th Amendment, you don't just hurt black people, you hurt women, you hurt all Americans. You hurt everybody. And so people need to, we, we really need a, a, a spiritual, we have a spiritual and moral crisis. But the world needs to know is that there are a lot of other voices. So that story isn't often told. Remember when people tell the story, for instance, of Birmingham and Montgomery and Selma back in the days, they act as though it was just Dr. King and some black folk. They don't tell the story about the white people and the Jewish people that were part of that movement. You look at that Selma the, the Montgomery march, it was, it was very diverse. And that's what we need now because too many people are being fed lies yes. and racism and homophobia and nothing's happening to, in their lives and they're voting for people who are passing policies who get elected because of racialized voter suppression and other things and once they get into office they pass policies that hurt all of us. So unequivocally you think he should step down? I think it, the people here have said that. This letter says that. Yeah, the people, the people from Alabama. Alabama, what do you say? Alabama, what do you say? Right. But even if he doesn't, now, now I know what that might lead to, because somebody might say, well, what about Al Franken? And what about others? First of all, let's remember, Roy Moore's policies were bad before this, but now this that they're talking about is children. That's right. And you take Al Franken. Al Franken with the adult, he admitted his wrong, apologized, has asked for an assessment, and has offered amends. Roy Moore has lied and lied and lied. Not, he has not done any repentance, anything. But the point of the matter is, his policies are hurtful. His, his recent actions were hurtful years ago and harmful and still haunt the women that, that impacted him. But the policies he wants to promote, he wants to go to the US, United States Senate and bring his extremism to the whole country. That's right. 
I believe, and I think the people of Alabama here, he has a right to run, but they have a right not to vote for him and to vote against him. Everybody that wants to sign up, let's find a line. The media can see. If you haven't signed, come on. What they said, you said just a clergy and non clergy. Anyone can sign. Come on, come on. Clergy, lay, Alabama, around the country, anyone can sign. Huh? You're signing up there. Okay, great. Signing up there. Great. Say it again. Say vote. Vote. Or die. Or die. Vote. Vote. Or die. Or die. Vote. Vote. 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 Or die.